Hi, everyone. It is a great pleasure to, me, to meet all of you here. So my name is Sergei Litvinenko, and I'm a staff engineer from Samsung R&D Ukraine, uh, working right now on uh, various AR and the VR projects. So I do believe that the session title is a self-explain. So during this session, we are going to talk about the overall AR assets creation pipeline, as well as about the tools we are offering to create, test, and publish your AR emoji to the Galaxy apps. Uh, just uh, before we start, a couple of notices. So it's not going to be a deep in dive technical session or 3D art specific session. Instead, I will try to provide you a complete information required to create and market your own AR emojis on the Galaxy apps. So uh, one question prior we start. So how many of you attended our session in a theater related to the Disney partnership and AR emoji? OK, cool. So the reason why I'm asking, actually, these two sessions has uh, quite a lot of in common. So once we've started working on AR emoji with our partners, we actually met quite a lot of the challenges. And there were uh, quite a lot of internal VOCs from our partners regarding how we could actually validate and test our assets, how we could deploy and publish our own AR emojis to the market. So during this session, I'm going to try to address these issues within introducing our AR Emoji Studio. So why AR Emoji? Actually, time to time, like the people raising up this question, and from one side, it could look like, you know, the AR Emoji, it is like one, one time experience, just like play around the camera, and that's it. But uh, we believe that it is much more broader than that. Uh, within like a recent years, uh, the technologies actually changed a lot how uh, people are communicating to each other. So the, nowadays, on a daily basis, we are utilizing text while sending the messages and emails. So we are talking via voice calls or even talking to our personal assistant and uh, utilize the video channel and the live streaming as a way of communication. Let me give you one of the personal example. So one evening, I'm just uh, sending the message to my wife, telling that I'm going to be late today, and uh, receiving like uh, this emoji on a reply. And uh, another day, I just want to make a pleasant notice to my wife confirming our like vacation plans and uh, receive another emoji that they reply. So a key point here is that I have not received a single word in a response, but the uh, emoji itself gives me deep in dive information about the feeling and the expressions my wife wants to deliver to me. So, and here is exactly where the AR emoji comes in. And we here in the Samsung strongly believe that AR emoji can open a totally new way how we are communicate to each other, how we are expressing our emotions and feelings, share our experiences, and just makes fun. Uh, okay, so this is the overall agenda that I'm going to cover during this session. So we will have a quick look on AR emoji in Galaxy, uh, going through the overall assets creation pipeline required to, to make your own AR emoji. We'll introduce you our tool, Samsung AR Emoji Studio, and provide all essential information required to prepare and publish your own AR emoji to the Galaxy apps. AR emoji on Galaxy. So basically, there are two types of the AR emoji. And you can actually replace your face within your 
favorite character, or you can, can do a selfie photo and create your personal AR emoji. A couple of words about the, how AR emoji works. Actually, the AR emoji is a combination of the computer vision and the graphics solution together that uh, contains mainly within like a three major stages. So the first, we have a face tracking solution. So we are taking the camera preview, track the face, detecting the feature points of like landmark face, uh, landmark face features. Secondly, so there is a blend shape remapper solution, which uh, basically takes the face tracking data at an input and try to find out like exact matching of this face tracking data to the blend shapes within the corresponding space. And the finally, so we have a rendering solution that produce the final AR emoji for you. A couple of words about the AR emoji creation pipeline on a high level. So on a high level, so there are like three major stages. So the major part of work being done by the 3D artists, and uh, usually it's being done in a, like a DCC tools like the Maya and Max. So now secondly, we have like AR Emoji Studio tool, which actually prepare and do all the cooking work of your assets. And uh, finally, we are ready to upload our AR emojis to the Galaxy App Store. Let's have a look a bit in detail. So the data flow and the file formats. So uh, this the creation pipeline was introduced in a theater session. But on this slide, it's a bit like a different. Uh, and the difference is that the, we, are, we are putting the AR Emoji Studio. So basically, the overall pipeline looks as follows. So as I mentioned before, the, the major part of work is on the 3D artist side, starting from the sketch character design, following with the 3D work in the Maya or Max, which includes like the modeling, rigging, animation, setup and the generation, the materials, and finally, export your assets. So the, the, results, of being, uh, the results of the artwork, uh, artwork is an input for the AR Emoji Studio. And what actually the AR Emoji Studio does, it provides you a possibility to, to import your asset, check and validate and test within our simulation environment, and do the export further to the target device. We are providing a couple of options of the export, dependently on your purpose. So we could export your AR emoji assets to the GLTF file for the like, on-device testing, or could produce the final APK file for the Galaxy apps uploading. A couple of words about the work that has to be done in a, in a DCC tools like Maya. Uh, to represent the, every single facial expression. So the 3D artist uh, working hard to model the certain number of the uh, blend shapes that represent the particular face expression. And this, all of this work has to be done in a, in a, in a DCC tools environment. Uh, to cover every single facial expression, we came up with some blend shape convention that includes a certain number of blend shapes that corresponds to the facial expressions and every single part of your face. Uh, inclusively, blend shapes for your eyes, the blend shape for your bra, mouse, and the jaw. So in the, totally, it results on a current, uh, according to our current blend shape convention, we have 43 basic blend shapes that cover the majority of the face expressions, as well as we are providing uh, another 32 corrective blend shapes to cover the corner cases if you have any specific visual artifacts uh, while generate the face expression. 
input and output format. So this is one of the tricky part. Um, actually, like uh, these days, there are a variety of tools available on the market. From the 3D art side, so there are a variety of tools, and the, from the rendering side, there is uh, like dozens of the uh, graphics engine solutions, and every single solution has their own assets creation and the cooking pipeline. While starting work on the AR emoji, we had to think carefully about how to make a unified process for the creation and for the deployment of our assets to the target device. So within the AR emoji camera, we made a decision to go forward with the, with the GLTF format. Uh, how many of you heard about the GLTF? Okay, that's cool. So just a couple of words for those who didn't. So the GLTF, it is the open standard provided by the Kronos Group that actually uh, gives you an efficient format of the storing and the sharing 3D assets across the different platforms. So the GLTF itself encapsulated all required information for the 3D assets, inclusively the mesh geometry, animation data, your textures and materials, and etc. So our expectation as a result of the 3D artwork, uh, we expect that we receive the FBX file that will include the geometry and the, the blend shapes according to our convention, animation data, and texture and materials. After that, there is a place where the AR emoji studio comes in and it will convert and the produce you the GLTF file with all corresponding information uh, that was included in your FBX file. So what is AR Emoji Studio? Uh, AR Emoji Studio is a design tool that gives you a possibility to create, to customize, test, validate, and to publish your own AR Emoji to the Galaxy apps. So within the AR Emoji Studio, we provide the basic features like the import 3D model, set up your materials and the lights, provide the simulation environment and the rendering preview. So the rendering preview utilize exactly the same rendering pipeline that being used finally on a target device so that you can be sure that it looks like exactly the same as on a target device. As well, we are provide a couple of options to simulate the, your blend shapes and how they are working and the finally export and the generate APK file for you. Let's talk a bit about the materials. As uh, it was mentioned in the previous session, our rendering solution supports the physics-based rendering, and uh, we are expecting that uh, your assets being supplied with the physics-based rendering materials. Uh, the reason for that is actually that the GLTF supports the physics-based rendering out of the box, and it looks like the simple and the cheap way to produce a high-quality content. So to make a physics-based uh, shading within your assets, you have to supply the, the next textures. So basically, there is like the base color texture and the normal, and then there is the metallic roughness and the ambient occlusion textures. Uh, each of those are 8-bit textures and they will finally result in a one texture, like a 24-bit texture, that it is quite efficient from the, from the binary size as a result, like on a device. So there are different way actually how to generate and uh, export the uh, physics-based rendering materials but our strong recommendation is that if you are using a Maya environment for, for your 3D artwork, then we suggest to you to use the Stingray PBS setup to set up your materials and export it to the FBX file. So following this approach, 
AR Emoji Studio being capable to, uh, to get all the required uh, textures automatically and set up everything for you without any, like the manual work required. Um, on the studio side, we also provide you a possibility to modify the PBS materials factors. So you could play around within like the metallic and the roughness settings to tune up how your, how your character will look like and how it will reflect on your light conditions. And also, we are supporting the image-based lighting. So if you want to have uh, an environment reflections, let's say, on your eyes, you could supply the, like the cube map environment with your assets and then uh, your character will have like a different look on your eyes. Though I'm not sure if it's feasible here or not, but on the right image, there is a environment reflection in, on the eyes of the character. So now we are moving forward to the face expression character simulation. And this is one of the most important features we are introducing with the AR Emoji Studio. So once the 3D artists uh, produce the, their assets, so the first thing that we have to do is actually to test and validate how these assets are working on the real tracking data. So to do so, we have a couple of options. So the first one, actually, it's not related to the, to the face tracking data. So this is the basic blend shape editor where you can manually change the weights of your blend shapes and see how your contents looks like. And for the real simulation of your blend shapes within the, within the face tracking data, we provide the two options. First, it is like the image preset simulation. So you could like set up exact image and to see how your character will look like with this particular expression. Or uh, even moving further, we are providing a video presets that can simulate how your character will look like within these particular expressions. OK, so once uh, you finished within the setup and the test and the validation in the simulation, environment, we gives you an opportunity for the on-device testing. And as I mentioned before, like there are two options for you. So you could actually the, export your assets to the GLTF file, sideload this GLTF file to the device, and they see how it looks like. Or if you are ready for publishing your AR emoji assets to the Galaxy Store, the AR emoji studio is capable to generate the final APK files Also, so one thing to mention is that, like, let's say that, like, working with a studio, it is like not one-time procedure. So 3D artists are continuously working on enhancing the quality of the materials or the quality of the like geometers and the blend shapes. So when we have to go through the these uh, like assets cooking and conversions uh, many, many, many times. So to minimize the overhead for that, we are introducing the batch mode that provides you a possibility to generate the APK file or GLTF file bypass the studio via the command line. So it should be quite uh, efficient uh, in cases when, let's say, so you have a texture change or you have some like a geometry change, but everything being already set up. So to do so, you could just like go through the one common line, and it's done. OK, so it's time to, to have a short up demo and see how it looks like on a PC. So basically, this is our AR Emoji Studio. So I'm launching the studio. So we have uh, two builds, one for the Windows, another for the Mac. So actually, you can use it on the both platforms. 
so to start work with the AR Emoji Studio, first thing to do is you actually need to import your assets. So as for the import, we have a two options. So actually, uh, we are supporting loading of the FBX files, and we expect is that it is a default uh, assets that comes as an input to the studio. But uh, also we have another case when you already generated the GLTF file and you want to modify the GLTF file. So for that purposes, we also support the loading of the GLTF file. So let me open some model. So I am opening the GLTF file. OK. So this is our kids beaver. And uh, what we have here, so area on the right, this is actually our preview window. So there is a basic control quite similar to what you are doing in the Maya. So you can like uh, rotate, uh, like uh, zoom in, zoom out, and you can translate it. Uh, also, we provide a couple of the viewpoints presets for you. So it's like the full body and there is a half body, and there is a face. And uh, on the left, so there is the, all the properties that comes along with these assets. So let's go one by one within these properties. So the first one, it is the materials tab. And the materials uh, actually expose all related textures and uh, about every single mesh of these assets. So in this particular case, we actually have uh, two meshes. One, it is like the beaver face. Uh, it's not the face, actually. It's like the whole body. And another one, it is like uh, eye mesh. So within the, uh, within the beaver face mesh, there is a texture setup. So there is a base color texture. And we have the uh, metallic roughness and the ambient occlusion textures, and there is like a no normal and emission being used in this particular example. Uh, as I mentioned before, we are providing an options and the settings to play around with the metallic roughness factors with your assets. And this is actually how it looks like. So let's say um, you can like modify the roughness from one to zero, and we can observe how our mesh will be reflected dependently on the value we set. Okay, following up the materials, uh, we have a lighting, lighting preset. So in the lighting uh, tab options, uh, we have a standard control to modify the light source positions. We currently support up to the, to the three light sources. So you can uh, set up the position for each light source and it will be reflected within your asset. Uh, also, we have some certain amount of the standard presets, and you can just choose some lights from your standard presets, or actually you can modify and save your own lighting preset along with you. Okay, so uh, also, on a device except the character that tracks your face. So you could uh, visualize it with some like the background image. Okay, looks better. And uh, currently on AR Emoji camera, we provide you an option to set up an idle animation. So if you want your character be more life attractive, so we recommend to set up the idle animation to be used on an AR emoji camera. So in the finally, we are moving to the, <clears throat> to the expressions and our simulation environment. So as I mentioned, there are three options for you. So the first one, it is like the blend shape editor, where you can uh, manually change the blend shape weights and they see how your character looks like in these certain conditions. So it was the eyes, or we can modify the jaw. So apparently of that, we could go forward uh, with, uh, just a second, something. 
So within the image preset, when you can uh, just choose the image and then see how your character will look like within this particular expression. So and they go in furthermore to test and validate more complicated use cases. We are providing a video presets that has actually the certain number of the face expression and as well as some extreme cases. So you can see how your character will look like in this particular example. So once you validate and are pretty fine within your character setup, we are actually ready for the deploying your assets to the device or either to the Galaxy apps. To do so, so there is a, a pretty simple function. So in the menu, you just like go to the push menu and just choose the push as a binary. So in this case, we will, we will take these assets, generate the project, and the sideload this, uh, this asset to the device. But once it comes to the publishing your assets to the Galaxy apps, um, quite often the 3D art studios prefer to have some like a bundles let's say like a Disney cases. In the Disney cases, we have a Mickey and Minnie, we have Incredibles family. So to do this work uh, on a studio side, we provide you a possibility for the, for the bundle assets uh, generation and generation the APK within the multiple assets. So let's try to check. So here I have actually our kids' family assets, which actually contains four assets, and I just feed this folder within the assets to the studio. So once you provide the assets, uh, the studio will traverse every single assets available with, within this folder, do all required conversion, so they generate the project and the APK file, and after that, uh, it will sideload the APK file to the device. It may take some same time. Okay. So I do believe it relates to the ADB connection. So yes, I, I have a device here. So it's like connected via USB cable. So the, like the process being finished. So once uh, it is finished, we are ready to validate and to test uh, our assets on a target device. I will try to use this brand new flip. First time experience for me. Oops, works like a charm. Okay, I'm launching the camera application. Okay, no AR emoji yet. So we are going to the AR emoji. And uh, here, so this is the bundle assets that I've just like the generated and uploaded to the device. So this is a beaver and uh, I'm really lucky to be present on this SDC session. And you can go like within like a, all the characters that we just siloed. So this is our croco and our slaws. Quite a strange guy. Okay. So it looks fine. Let's move forward. So the finally, we are reaching how actually to prepare and to publish your assets uh, to the Galaxy App Store. So basically the first stage we've already completed, we've generated the APK file, and this APK file is being ready for the upload into the Galaxy App Seller site. So what you, can, what you have to do is just take your APK file, upload it to the Galaxy apps, 
submit your application and just wait for the acceptance approval. So usually the Galaxy app seller side team will process your application submission within five working days. So this is our the best practices we have so far. We had a great collaboration experience with our Disney partners and uh, all of these uh, uh, Disney families are now available in the Galaxy apps and you can actually go to the Galaxy apps, uh, load these characters and enjoy your AR emoji experience. I'll give you, to give you some more insights about the potentials of the AR emoji, uh, so this is one of the activities uh, my team been working. So I came from the Ukraine and we believe that the AR emoji has some like the localization uh, potentials. So what we are trying to do right now is actually to bring our national characters like the Cossacks, so to be available on the AR emoji. And uh, I do believe that it should happen pretty soon. So and then finally, <coughs> uh, let me give you some like a general the guideline and the constraints we have so far. So during the theater session, so there was one question regarding the, the quality of the assets, how, how forward we actually could push the limits of the rendering quality. And uh, I, I want to try to comment on that. Actually, this is the situation where we have to find the balance in between the, the quality of our assets, in between the performance and our power budget we have. So as I mentioned, like the AR emoji, this is the combination of the computer vision and the graphics solution. So everything happens simultaneously in the real time. So we need to find out the proper balance, what we could, what we could actually do right now within the current hardware spec. So this is our, <coughs> our general guideline based on our experience. So regarding the geometry complexity, so the the Disney guys mentioned that their Incredibles is about the 15K polygons. So we could actually render 50K polygons within a 60 FPS, like, and, and it is a not major problem. But uh, increasing the number of polygons uh, not always being the, at the best option to, to produce the high quality assets. So instead, you could actually do more work on the material setups and produce like the high quality materials for your assets. So when it comes to the materials and the textures, uh, so high quality content requires high resolution textures, right? So uh, these days we have like a vacuum HD display resolution and uh, you can go forward within like 2K on the 2K textures, uh, but the size that your assets will we'll have uh, finally, it's quite a huge. So our recommendation is to target for the 1K to 1K uh, textures and it is good enough to, to get uh, quite good the visual quality. So number of blend shapes. So right now there is, we don't have any options. Every like 3D art studio who wants to create their own avatars has to follow our blend shape conventions and the 3D artist has to model like a 75 blend shapes. And the last two items like the animation and ice. So this is just a recommendation from our side. AR emoji is all about interaction. So we do recommend to supply your assets with the idle animation to make it more live and more natural for the users. And the eyes. Ice really matters a lot. Like our Disney colleagues mentioned that, okay, like uh, our, like the, the focus part of assets creation is like head and the eyes. So what we recommend to you is to utilize our image-based lighting features, supply it with your assets so that you could have a realistic reflections in your eye on your character. Okay. Now we are reaching actually our status and our plans. So right now, AR Emoji Studio is in a closed beta and we are supplying the studio to the second parties we are working with. And we, 
So we have quite a lot of like the features and the wish list on our roadmap and right now actively working on it and expecting to see the official Samsung AR emoji 1.0 release, uh, so the first half of the, of the next year. But uh, for those of you who are really interested and want to be enrolled right now, you can contact us via the following address. Just give a short description about your artwork and we will deliver this tool for you. Or if you have any further questions or details, I gently invite you to visit our booth. So we have like AR Emoji booth and AR Emoji Studio booth. So and you can experience it by yourself. So that's all from my side. And I'm welcome to answer on your questions. Uh, hi, my name is Hi, my name is Brent uh, from Surf. Uh, I'm curious if you guys plan on doing runtime rendering of models versus having to load them and bundle them into an APK. Oh, sorry, could you repeat your question just a bit louder? Uh, yeah. So my question is, do you plan on letting developers import at runtime models rather than and stream them? rather than having them built and compiled into the APK? Um, OK, thanks you for the question. It's actually quite a good question. And I would uh, like put it as follows. Like, so there are two type of things. So when we are talking about the AR Emoji Studio, so this is a tool that provides you a possibility to generate your AR Emoji assets and supply it with an AR Emoji camera application. Uh, if you want to develop your own application <coughs> and script your assets, whatever, I'm sorry. <coughs> so then we have a dedicated boost on that that states AR Emoji SDK. So and I do believe that our colleagues from the AR Emoji SDK will give you an answer on that. So if you want to develop the, like a custom-based application with certain uh, custom behavior, scripting, animation, so you may go forward with an AR uh, emoji SDK. Yep. Right now. Thank you. Um, you said the project is in beta right now. What's your timeline for moving out of beta? Okay, so as I just a second. So as I mentioned, like right now, it's a closed beta. Official release will be first half of the next year for the partners we are working with. Uh, the, 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 the reason for that is that uh, we have uh, quite a lot of features. So currently, what we are supporting, what it is like the character AR emoji, when you have just like a, your character. But except of that, we have uh, my emoji or your personal character when you create your emoji from the selfie photo. So uh, for this type of uh, AR emoji, we are gonna provide the functionality to create the assets for your AR emoji that will include like the clothes, like the shoes, accessories, hairstyles, and all of this stuff. And that's gonna be supplied within our first release, first half of year. So right now we are on a stage, tightly co-working with our partners, gathering VOCs, implementing that features, validating internally, and then just once we are ready, we will expose it to the public. But for any one of you who are just want to be involved, like you can contact us and we could provide a tool for you. Yep. Does, does it uh, support occluder materials, like occlusion materials? Occlusion, mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions? If not, then thanks a lot for the joining this session. And there is another gentle reminder. If you could, you could please like the rate the session and uh, give us your feedback. Thanks a lot and uh, have a nice day.